All right, here we go for the next stage of this process. We're gonna go ahead and cast the silicone mold. Now there's a couple of different products that I use. One of them is this uh, amazing mold rubber. Uh, the other one is this high strength three uh, Alumilite. You can see the, the website here. The Alumilite's pretty good stuff. Uh, you'll find it's super flexible. You can do a lot of things with it. They've got another model that's not the high strength three. It's uh, much stiffer than that. I find that that stuff breaks. You really need to have a lot more flexibility when you're pulling off your molds and whatnot. Uh, if you're here in the States and you have a local Hobby Lobby, this is they've got this stuff stocked usually over there in the model section. If they don't have that stocked, they've got this amazing mold rubber stocked over in the clay section, I believe. And this is about $10 cheaper than the other stuff is, which is extremely surprising. And I'm getting to where I actually kind of like this more than I like the other stuff. I find it's a little more flexible and I'm able to get it out of the, the insets a lot easier. So... Those are the products that I use right now. I think I think this one is an Aluminite product. I'm not for sure. Moldputty.com. It, it seems a lot like Aluminite. There's a lot of similarities it has. But uh, Aluminite's the, the brand for most of what I use. So I've got most of what's left of my uh, one of those kits. And it's, it's here. It's a catalyst. Um, I've got some scissors for cutting the molding. I've got some hot, uh, hot glue gun here, and then really the only other thing is I want some some thin cardboard, which is why I save these boxes right here. It's because they're perfect for building the walls for the molding. So this needs to be set down pretty secure to the surface as much as possible. Otherwise, you're going to have silicone seeping in underneath, and it's a waste of silicone, and you have to cut it later and clean it up. So we're trying to avoid that as much as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to hot glue on the back of this thing. Try and keep them kind of thin strands. Then not be crazy, but... Alright, I'm going to set it down. I want it down on a flat surface. Push it down as much as you can and hold it without damaging the foam that you spent however long detailing. Uh, the other thing I have in this process is this thin protector backer. It's a cookie sheet of some sort, but I, I grabbed them so I didn't hurt my table surface. Uh, they're also super flexible, so it's easy to clean the hot glue off of them later or uh, pop the mold off. I think this is good. I think it's going to come up from that. Be real careful how you apply pressure to this thing. Pretty happy with that. All right, I'm gonna cut a box here. I'm gonna cut this thing up into shreds out off uh, off frame, and uh, I'll come back in with some cardboard here. All right, I've got one of those mold boxes cut in the last long strips. Don't worry about it being super straight. There's a lot of forgiveness to be had with a hot glue gun. So I'm gonna kind of curl it up real quick. Let's kind of roll it up. Add some curvature to the mold so it's not so square. nice rounded shape that's all well and good all right when we're doing this there's a couple things to keep in mind here because this is so shallow on one end there's gonna be a lot more silicone on this end obviously all right this is a self-leveling liquid so it's not too complicated to do but it's something to keep in mind if you're doing something that's real tall hold on one side but real shallow on the other it's going to change the math on what silicone how much silicone you need the other thing is that we really don't want to need to give this thing too much room I might have, I should have plenty of cardboard for one. Yeah, I have plenty. I'm gonna give it probably about, not a half inch, you know, but probably three eighths at least around the edge. So, I'm gonna start up on this back side here. Like so, and I'm gonna just stick that nose right in the corner. 
and run it down the length. Now I can shut the camera a little bit. I can push that glue after it's on the on the board. And I'm just gonna hit that again and start working my way around. And then hold it. I'll have that glue set for a second. It takes a minute for hot glue to set. I'll let it set. Hot glue is cheaper than silicone, so don't be afraid to, uh, to spend it here. I'm going to go ahead and seal this wall up right here. This is where 99% of the leaks happen I, that I've had with this. so. Try and do this. Alright, I'm pretty happy with that. Got about a 3 8 inch gap around everything. A little extra over there, but not horrible. I'm going to let this set up. And I'm going to uh, go ahead and mix this nonsense up. And when we do this, we'll keep the glue gun ready to go. Um, to fill any gaps that create while this is happening. So we'll pour this in, shake that up good and strong before we mix it in there, and we'll go. Other than that, we should be pretty close. Let this set up and we'll get going. All right, glue's all pretty well set up. Go ahead and pop the cork on this one. Dump the whole thing in these. This does not set up very quickly. It's not like the resin or the resin will set up within a couple of minutes. This will set up. It starts getting slow and pretty thick within the next 10, but you have way more time to work with this.
you can tap the table and let all the air bubbles come out, but really this stuff takes so long to set that I haven't had that much of a problem with it before. I don't see any silicone spilling out through my my edges, so I'm gonna go ahead and call that good. My hold is down in the down in the silicone a little bit, probably a quarter inch or three eighths of an inch, which is plenty for this, no bigger than this is. So I would call that a success. Let that, no, just let that sit in there. And pack up all this. Throw it away. All right, that's setting. I would let it sit overnight, at the late, at least overnight. You know, eight hours. Uh, pick it up tomorrow. We will, uh, we'll pop that, pop that foam out of there. Clean up that mold, and uh, we'll pour some polyurethane in it. We should be good to go. So fantastic. All right. All right, so this silicone mold's been sitting here for a while. Uh, we're ready to go on this. And you see that we've got a couple of small leaks, but nothing crazy. It really had hardened by the time that uh, anything had happened. You can see a little one there. I think that's the biggest one right there, but <clears throat> it was already setting up by the time I saw this one. It didn't, didn't have much to go, so that was pretty simple. So we'll go ahead and do just rip this sidewall off. Pretty happy with that. You can see that it seeped in a little bit around the edges, which is pretty normal. Um, that's still why we want to get that as close down to the surface as possible to prevent as much of that seepage. Uh, and you'll notice for future reference that this that hot glue peels up off of this pretty easily. So I've casted a bunch of silicone molds on this nonsense, and it it generally works out pretty well. Yeah, so. That's pretty much ready to go again. All right. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to clean up that edge. And I've got a uh, a little sawtooth blade that I'm going to use because I, it, it catches it a little bit better. Whereas a normal knife, I might just drag a bit more. Whereas that tooth will will trap that that edge and and uh, cut more efficiently. Uh, I'm not going to cut out in here. I want to cut just a little bit inside, not much. But I, if I cut out here, I'm going to lose detail uh, that I sculpted. So I'm going to cut, cut in the green, but not much inside of it. I'm going to angle that blade towards the inside of the mold and cut. I encourage you doing multiple molds at once because it's a lot more efficient. So when you're looking at it, this is just a little over a pound of silicone, not much more than a pound. Pretty pretty small amount of silicone still. With this mold, we spent all that silicone on just one. 
Whereas on this one, I've shared that, that border wall here with three other holds. So instead of having this, if I'm casting those, instead of having to cast two extra walls for just that one hold, I've only had to cast just that one edge for this hold. You know, and it's sharing this with this one. Uh, all four of these holes are split in the cost of this, etc. You know, it's a lot more efficient. If you got the silicone on hand to cast them, you don't want to get ridiculous. You don't want molds, you know, a whole foot and a half across. But if you got a series of small holds, put them all down together, cast them together, and that way they're all in one piece and you're saving that cost on silicone. Otherwise, you're just making a lot of sidewall for one mold. Um, I generally like to do at least two or three together. Um, but for the, you know, for the purposes of this training, I didn't want to do that many pieces, so. There's a lot of foam in there right now. That's fine. We're going to snap the big pieces out as much as we can. Just kind of run your fingernails down through there and scrape it a bit. Don't get too aggressive because you can damage the, uh, the texture of your foam. <laughs> 